It's well known in the business of stock photography that photographs of newsworthy subject sell and sometimes they sell very well. If you're an outdoor photographer hoping to make money from your stock photographs, then you're probably well aware of the need for outdoor photographers to create images the markets are going to want. Look at paparazzi photographers, for example. They've been known to make a fortune capturing images of celebrities in newsmaking situations. So with some foresight and good ideas, so can outdoor and nature photographers. Many outdoor photographers shoot a wide variety of subjects that have to do with the outdoors, nature, and how humans interact with the outdoors. But often, those images lack that newsmaking ingredient that makes them a hot seller. Many of those images may languish in a photo library waiting for a buyer, and that's if there ever is one. There's already a huge glut in superb imagery of most outdoor subjects, so taking note of what's in the news related to anything outdoors such as nature, the environment, and even the politics surrounding it all can be quite profitable. So if you're wondering what to shoot, here's one idea that I believe would do very well in today's markets, and it's called global warming. And I'm about to show you one image I created in just a moment. But some things to think about are that there really is nothing new here when you're shooting stock photos of concepts. It's just the topic has changed some. I remember my stock agency suggesting 25 years ago that I shoot pollution and green and the environment. So while I was venturing across the lower 48 in my pickup camper for several years photographing, where I captured the parks and the scenery, I also captured the smokestacks, river pollution, livestock feedlots, and anything I could put in front of the camera that said pollution and the environment. Today, however, that hot keyword is global warming. And if you wonder whether there is a market for images that deal with that topic, just do an online search. A couple things I found were articles covering all angles of the topic on news sites like CNN and Time Magazine, but also photo agency Corbus once profiled one of their contributing photographers who specializes in global warming. And if you look here, you can see what Getty Images has in the way of global warming images. A wide collection captured on location across the globe, as well as some conceptual images that were created on the computer. Images of real icebergs melting to digital composites like this one showing a lawn turning to cracked mud. They all boil down to the same idea or concept. You certainly can be out chasing tornadoes, heading to the Arctic for melting icebergs, or be the first camera on scene after the devastating hurricane. But you can also create images with a strong chance of selling by generating an idea and then executing it on the computer. Then, once you get those images captured or created, get them online quickly so they're up for sale. Now here's a real short sampling of photo ideas that I think about when I'm trying to decide what to create. And these just scratch the surface of potential ideas. Receding ice or glacier. Power plants or a facility with smokestacks belching out smoke and gases. Forest fires or the after effects. Flooding. Endangered species. Global warming's impact on underwater marine life, violent storms, arid lands or images showing water shortage, and wilting crops. Now, if you're fortunate enough to venture off on an Antarctic photo adventure or a trip to Iceland or the Arctic, do some research ahead of time and see what might be happening in those regions as far as global warming is concerned. Then when you're visiting, you can plan to photograph accordingly. That research will at least make you aware of photo ops to be on the lookout for. No matter how you feel about the politics of environmentalism and global warming, you can be certain that high quality, well thought out and captured images have a place in today's photo markets. That makes photography of global warming a potentially profitable angle in a tough stock photography market. So here's the global warming photograph that I created not long ago when I was writing an article on this particular subject about photographing and capturing global warming images as one way to create images that are important in today's markets. And I created this out of several different photographs and then composited them together in Photoshop to create this final image. And it pretty much says global warming and threatening weather and storms and water shortages and that sort of thing. So this is what I ended up with. Now, I will 
throw in my little disclaimer here. I am not uh, a Hall of Fame Photoshop user by any means. So I just do what works. And oftentimes I create probably many more steps than I really need to because I'm trying new things and so on. So if you have any suggestions on Photoshop tips, by all means, please post those in the comment section because I'd certainly like to learn something from you as well. So the way that I started here is I had this image right here, which is from Death Valley. Now I do have a lot of other cracked mud images and you can see just a sampling here. This is just a few of them. And I chose this Death Valley one because I like the leading lines that are coming in here that are going to be really exaggerated in the final image. But the thing about it is here, keep in mind this does not have a horizon or a uh, destination at the end of the earth, so to speak. So I'm going to have to stretch this image out to make it look like it was shot from down at ground level to create that force perspective or the foreground in your face leading off into the horizon. And it's not perfect, but I think it works really well. And the other thing I had was a cloud image here from a threatening storm. I think I was in Alabama traveling and these clouds were really beginning to look like they were going to create a threatening storm. So I shot a few images before I moved on. And then also I have this image here, which is a collection of lightning. I used to um, have some software from Alien Skin that produced lightning and they pretty much discontinued that software until the last couple years. But back when I created this, I think that the lightning was, the software that is, was pretty much designed for Windows Vista or even something before that. So knowing full well that they weren't making that software anymore, I created a whole ton of different lightning shapes and put them all in a Photoshop document so that I have access to them later. And then I got rid of that old Vista computer and that was pretty much the end of the software. Now I will say that Alien Skin their software called iCandy now has the lightning generator in it and so it's great you can still generate great lightning to me this is the most realistic looking lightning I've seen created on the computer and so it's one reason I really like the software because I have this I've never gone back and upgraded but I probably will at some point so I will go in here and I'll select a couple different lightning bolts and I'll try some and see which ones work best for the image that I'm creating and then I'll just put those in there. And you can see I got about four different lightning bolts in there. Not an overwhelming amount but just enough to kind of add the drama and the effect and get that message across. So here's what I did for this image. I took my base image which is this Death Valley cracked mud and for the most part what I did is, I'll show you what I did here again. I duplicated the background, turned off the bottom. Then I went in and I selected all. I go over to Edit, Transform, and Skew. And I then subsequently pulled these edges out quite a distance. And I saved it at that. Then I went back in and I hit Control T to transform it and I then went down about 35% down something like that I saved that so that's how I for the most part created my foreground the distorted look so to speak as you can see here that's how I took an image that I'm looking down at the ground at and really kind of made it look like the camera was on the ground by just transforming it that way so once I got this transformed to the point where I'm happy with it, I then grabbed the marquee tool, came in, made a selection, and just overlapped the top of the base layer there, or the ground, and I filled that with black. So since I've already done that, I'm going to control D that, deselect it, and show you what I've done. So I filled that with black, and that's where I'm going to put the sky. But there was another reason for it. I then duplicated that layer, and I used a Gaussian blur to blur this edge a little bit and some of this is going to show in the final image. The next thing I did is I added a levels adjustment layer because it was time to start adding the contrast. So if you click on that you can kind of get an idea. I'm sort of pushing the contrast up a little bit really wanting to make this look like it does in the final image. Lots of contrast and so on. So I then went in and I added a curves layer to add a little bit more 
contrast. And here you can see that I've really kind of pushed the peaks here a little bit. The histogram's splitting a little bit, but that's okay. And so I've made the blacks pretty dark, dark in the mid-tones, and kind of went up on the uh, lighter tones as well. I next created a vignette, and just on an empty layer, using the gradient tool right here, which um, selecting the round up here. And then I just kind of went out, created a vignette with a darker top, and it's very, very subtly used. If you uh, see, I've got opacity of 42%. If I come full, that's what the original vignette looked like. And this is what I wanted, and there's reasons that I'm going for this, because I don't want the demarcation line between the sky and the foreground to be obvious that it's a photo composite, so I'm darkening. So I left this at about 42%. All right, then I added the sky. And as you can see, it looks pretty good, but if you're going to blow that up, you're going to see the line between the sky and the foreground, and I didn't really want that. So I created a little bit more of the vignette effect on the foreground. Then I added a black and white layer, and I didn't want to completely make it black and white, but I didn't want it to be very colorful either. So here is the mask. I blocked out the black and white kind of in the middle, a little bit down here, but I let the blue sky remain, or I should say I let the blue sky stay pretty gray in the tonal values, for example. The next thing I did is I darkened the image with another curves layer, and as you can see up here, I pretty much just did a general darkening, and it's mostly, well, it's on the overall image. I also removed a little bit of the blue here by coming down on the uh, blue part of the curves layer to eliminate some of the blue cast that uh, I was getting you know, overall up here. The next thing I did is I added a hue saturation to kind of saturate a little bit. And if you look at it, I'm kind of pushing the color more towards yellowish a little bit and removing again some of the blue. So if you toggle that on and off, it's real subtle. But you can see when it's off, there's a green cast in here a little bit and a little bit of blue up there. So I made it a little bit warmer overall. All right. The next one is another curves layer for another darkening effect. And once again, really kind of pushing the darks down and leaving some of the highlights up. But now I have achieved that darkness that I'm looking for, the starkness. If you see here, the demarcation line between the sky and the base image or the ground is now pretty blurred in darkness. And so now I don't, uh, now, well, I should say I'm getting where I want to be. One thing I didn't like was I didn't like how bright it was compared to this over here. So what I ended up doing was putting an empty layer, as you can see right here, I set it to darken mode. I use the eyedropper tool to sample this over here. Then I just use the brush tool to go in and, and uh, I reduced it a lot smaller. And I just kind of went in and painted some of that blue in there to even it out a little bit. Then I decided I wanted another black and white layer because I was still just a little bit too much color. So here you can see me toggling it on and off. I want to reduce the sky in bluish a little bit more. So I added a black and white layer, but as you can see here, I didn't want to affect the foreground as much as I wanted to affect the sky. So I just basically painted a circle here to kind of keep the black and white from affecting this area as much, but leave it up here a little bit more. And as I mentioned, this is a long building process. Then I started adding my lightning, as you can see here up in the sky. In fact, I'll blow this up just a little bit. Get it centered. Okay. Another lightning. Alright. This one's missing the target up here just a little bit. So I create a glow spot because if you look at real lightning in photographs, it always has a hot spot where the lightning is coming out of the clouds. So that might need to be a little bit bigger, but I think it's working okay. The other thing is this is looking like it's supposed to hit the ground. 
So I'm going to go back to that layer and hit Control T and bring it back down to the ground a little bit. Again, making it look fairly realistic. All right, so we got lightning and then we got the glow spot in some cases. So this one here is also lightning coming out of the sky. Another lightning, and I added this one, but in the end, I don't like it. So I didn't leave that in my final image, but I threw it in there anyway. It just didn't look realistic. So I added one more lightning over here and another glow spot right there. So if you look at this overall image, it pretty well gives you an idea of all the steps I went through to create basically my global warming image. And I have not got this off to my photo agency yet to test the markets, but uh, hopefully it's going to do pretty well. So it kind of gives you an idea about uh, if you got all these elements, and I have a library of photo elements that I capture, create signs, clouds, cracked mud, all kinds of stuff like that. And then if I get an idea for a photograph, I'll go in and I'll, for the most part, create it in Photoshop. So... I'm hoping this uh, image does pretty well in the markets, but we'll soon find out. So that's it on how I created the image in Photoshop. Hi, and thanks for watching. I sure hope you enjoyed that video. If you'd like to support this YouTube channel, go over to greatphotographycourses.net and check out our photography classes. We offer programs in commercial photography, architecture and real estate photography, the business of outdoor and nature photography, flash photography, portrait photography, HDR, and a whole lot more. And if you do find a course you're interested in taking, we're happy to give you 50% off. Just be sure and use coupon code YT50 when you register for the course, and that'll get you in for half price. So once again, thanks for watching.